much. Um, right, well, I can do the Brilliant. Okay. So, here's my presentation. So we were told to try something a little bit different for our presentations. I think I maybe took this a little bit literally. Um, um, felt like my presentations were more of a performance, so I thought I'd kind of lean into that a little bit. So more recently with my work, I've stepped away from using photographic processes and books, and instead I've kind of started to use more video processes and more the idea of experimentation. And with this experiment, what I'm trying to basically play around a little bit with is one of the ideas that I've been using, <laughs> is the idea of failure. Um, so basically what I've done is I've made a showreel of my work, then recorded it onto this VHS cassette, which is exactly, Sheila, five minutes long. However, unfortunately, for Sheila, time actually, as we all know, is not linear. Um, it's relative. And in this time, the relative force at play here is the tension that I hold this tape at will dictate whether or not this runs for five minutes on it. Uh, I've also decided to use an OHP because I want to use totally analog processes so there can be no kind of remoteness so I can't control. So what's going to happen, hopefully, is in about three and a half minutes' time, this tape will wind into there and pull that glass off that at exactly the same time that that glass on there is going to fall off that table. Um, there's absolutely no possibility that that's going to work. However, that's the kind of idea when you're kind of playing around with failure. Because um, failure is unachievable. It's the paradox of failure. If as an art project you set out to make it fail, then actually your failure becomes a success because you've successfully failed at making an art project. Instead, what you have to do is create an incredibly complex system where there is the statistical chance of success. However, that statistical chance is fairly low. So, um, and that's what I've been interested in, this idea of complex systems. So what this basically is, is this is a glass that I left on the edge of that table in an empty room. Um, in a, again, about three minutes, it's just going to fall off. Nothing's going to happen to it. What is currently happening in this empty room is a whole bunch of complex forces are acting upon that glass uh, and will eventually kind of cause it to fall off that uh, desk in an apparent random way. But there is no such thing as randomness, just over complexity. I kind of liked that as a metaphor as well with the idea of the complex kind of world in which we live. So, in terms of my methods, I like this idea of experimentation, and I've really led into that, both in an artistic sense, but also in a scientific sense. Um, so with that in mind, that one of my videos that I made was I read that if you go out um, and stand underneath high voltage power lines with a strip light, you can play the electromagnetic forces in the air conduct them through your body um, and actually light a tube just from the air. So I went and I did that for a bit, but I also felt that felt like to me kind of playing some kind of musical instrument. And I've been really interested in the work of John Cage and I started looking into that. So what I decided I would do then is, although there's no sound, is I would score this film myself by playing the violin, an instrument that I no way, shape or form I can play. Um, but I kind of felt that the two things kind of interlinked with one another. There we go. Um, so, the idea, I guess, is that I actually don't really have a goal in mind for my project. Um, the goal itself, basically, is just the experiment. And I've become really interested in this idea of rhizomatic learning. So with rhizomatic learning, what that is, is a, a post-structural way of thought where actually any of your projects that you do do not necessarily have a beginning or an end. They don't have a conclusion. So this is me uh, crushing glasses in the park with a book press vice, um, <laughs> getting bogged down in the mud, 
Um, really kind of inspired, this kind of came out of the back of like a lot of tutorials and one-to-ones that I had with my tutors and stuff about how um, artists, such people such as like the Fluxes Movement, Joseph Boyd, would kind of, kind of make work. Um, based on these ideas <coughs> that I was, I, I was interested in at this moment in time, in a minute. So, what that meant is that just allowed me to write down a bunch of stuff. Oh, the glass. Oh, oh. oh. oh the glass. There you go. Um, so that basically allowed me. Just play around with a whole bunch of ideas and not be too stressed about what I actually achieved at the end of it. You wouldn't believe how long that took to put together. <laughs> <There you go. laughs>